Regular programming will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the following special program. Eunice will be joined in progress following the NIT game. This is Bradley Braves basketball. Tonight, the Braves meet Syracuse University in second round action of the National Invitational Tournament. Brought to you in part by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer. Head for the mountains. Now, from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, here are the Bradley Braves. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Second round action in the NIT tournament. Dan Swaney and Bradley Sports Information Director Joe D'Alfonso at first side. Joe, good to have you along on the television side this evening. Thank you, Dan, for a little bit of a switch, but uh, I think we'll get used to it as we have to get used to this beautiful building just a little bit. This is something else, isn't it? They're going to have 20,000 or so here, although I say they're a ways away from that so far, just looking around the place. And they're coming to see two teams that have something to prove to the country, Joe. That's right. Syracuse, uh, of course, went to the NIT finals last year, lost to Missouri Valley Conference entrant Tulsa. They thought they should have been to the NCAA. They want to go back and win the title this year. Bradley, of course, everyone knows their story. They should have been to the NCAA, so they're trying to get to New York to prove that they should be in some sort of championship game. Bradley's out here. They're healthy. And again, we talked about that last time. That week off sure didn't hurt him. No. Everyone is healthy. Everyone practiced hard. David Sirkill, Eddie Matthews with their ankle problems. Mitchell J.J. Anderson with his back spasms. Uh, everyone's healthy. Everybody's running and looking forward to a good game. This is going to be quite a place. It's going to be full. They talk about this place being the sixth man. And I tell you, it's anything like at Robertson. We're going to find out here pretty soon what the crowd's going to do for this team. Well, Dick Versace told the team last night before practice that it can't be any worse than Illinois State or Wichita State or New Mexico State in our league and the Palestra in Philadelphia. So we're not too awed by it right now. But I think if there's 22,000 people here and they start screaming, it could be a little bit of a change. We're at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, and we'll be right back and take a look at our starting lineups in just a moment. Sometimes a simple river crossing isn't so simple. Your turn. Push. Head for the mountains. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Brewed for a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for the bush beer. Head for the mountains. That's a good job, right? Head for the bush beer. Are you concerned about the alarming increase in crime? Are you concerned about your taxes? Can you afford an expensive new jail? Let me put my 23 years experience in law enforcement and my 18 years of education, which includes degrees in police administration, to work for you. I can and will give you better police protection to protect you and your family. Make your vote count and have your concerns heard. Vote for me, Emmanuel Manius, March 16th. New from Whirlpool. Sensational bonus buys just when you need them most. At our store now, Whirlpool's regular capacity automatic washer and high performance dryer. The washer has energy saving water temp selector and water saving load size selector plus much more. The dryer has five drying cycles including permanent press and three drying temps. We're waiting for you with our Whirlpool bonus buys right now. Come see us. Come see Cohen's in Pekin, Sheridan Village and the Place Center Showcase in downtown Peoria. Back of the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, Dan Sweeney with Joe D'Alfonso. Second round action in the NIT tournament. Tonight, Syracuse Orangemen with a record of 16 wins and 12 losses. They are coached by the highly successful Jim Beheim. Six years, he has taken his team to a tournament every year. Four NCAA tournaments and two NIT tournaments. And it's hard to get better than that, Joe. 
Oh, he's got a tremendous record here. The Syracuse Orange Men has a great basketball tradition. They've gone to a postseason tournament for 11 straight years. And uh, eighth straight, it was the NCAA. And last year and this year is the NIT. And uh, just the support you see around us here in, in this fantastic place of a facility uh, shows you that this is a, a great basketball program. And it's, it's going uh, top shelf. The Syracuse Orangemen moved into the second round of the NIT with a win over St. Peter's, 84-75 in the opening round. Leo Routens and Eric Sandifer both with 19 points in that ball game to lead the Orangemen. By the way, Jim Beheim's record in 152 games that he has coached here, he has won. Oh, we'll have to redo that. Going into this year, he was 122 and 30 at 16 and 12 on either end. And you got a great record for a coach in five and six years here at Syracuse University. Bradley, on the other hand, not too bad either. They are 22 and 10. Of course, of course they're coached by Dick Versace with a record of 72 wins, 46 losses. And they made it here to the Carrier Dome via that win over American University, 76-65. And they are healthy. They are ready to play basketball. Joe, you were with the team in here when they were going through some shooting drills last night. What were their reactions? Because that's the first thing you, when you walk into this place, as magnificent as it is, it really it didn't take my breath away. I like the first time I went in the assembly hall in Champaign, I went. <gasps> when right. you walk in here the first time, you don't get that kind of awestruck that you do uh, that you might expect. No, and to our anyway. players were not awestruck, Dan. Uh, the first thing you notice when you come in here is how cold it is. In fact, right now there's a big clock up on the ceiling that says 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, that's the first thing that hits you. It's kind of cool in here right now. But uh, it's a marvelous structure. But Mitchell's been to the Superdome in, uh, in New Orleans as our coaching staff. And uh, we played in just uh, unbelievable places and, and pits around the country. So we're really not awestruck here. Uh, but like I said, if this place gets rocking, uh, I think the crowd will come into play as a sixth man like it's so famous for. Some things to look forward to tonight. First of all, five more field goals. And Mitchell Anderson uh, will have 200 for the fourth straight year. No other Bradley player has ever done that. Only Chet Walker did it three times along with Mitchell. Four more rebounds will give David Third Kill a career mark of 500, making him only the 17th Bradley player to grab that many boards. And seven assists will give Willie Scott 200 on the year, making him only the second player in Bradley history to record that many in just one season. Tom Les, of course, has the Bradley record of 218. Let's go now to PA announcer Carl Allenberg for tonight's starting lineup. Bradley Braves from Peoria, Illinois. A 5'11 junior out of Chicago wearing number three, Willie Scott. A 6'3 junior from Joliet, Illinois. Number 40, Barney Mines. A 6'9 senior from Chicago. Number 50, Donald Reese. A 6'7 senior from St. Louis, Missouri. Number 35, David Thirdkill. And a 6'8 senior from Chicago, number 11, Mitchell Anderson. The head coach of the Bradley Braves, Dick Versace. For the Orange, a 6'3 sophomore from Long Island City, New York, number 33, Gene Waldron. A 6'4 junior from Ann Arbor, Michigan, number 40, Eric Sanifer. A 6'8 freshman from Malvern, New York, number 53, Andre Hawkins. A 6'5 junior from Astoria, New York, number 30, Tony Red Bruin. And a 6'8 junior from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, number 11, Leo Routen. The head coach of the Orange, Jim Beheim. And there you have our starting lineups for tonight's basketball game. Both teams have been announced, and 
I've never quite heard anything like the student section that they have here, Joe. When they introduced the Bradley players, it was, who's that? Who cares? So what? <laughs> Very vocal crowd, and they're standing here clapping right now. They will stand and clap in until the home team scores its first field goal. Let's hope that they have to stand for a long time. Dayton's off to an early 6-4 lead over the Illini. We'll certainly keep you posted on that score as the evening goes along. The Orangemen are led by Eric Sandifer, who's averaging just a tick over 17 points a ball game. They also have Tony Bruin, they call him Red, and Leo Routens, double-figure performers as well. We're ready to play basketball on WMBD Channel 31 in Peoria. Settle back and enjoy Dan Swaney, Joe D'Alfonso from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Dan, I look for Syracuse to come out and zone Bradley because they have matchup problems. On the other hand, I look for Bradley to go man-to-man -man with a big matchup, David Thurkill on Leo Routen. Syracuse is averaging almost 80 points a ball game, so they like to run the ball when they get the chance. Bradley, on the other hand, giving up only 62 points a ball game. They might have a good showdown offensively at the offensive end of the floor. Bradley gets a draw. Donald Reese into the attacking zone. And the Braves at the basketball. Everybody up on their feet here at the Carrier Dome. Willie Scott, Donald Reese. Looking at zone over. As you said, 2-3. Anderson, Willie Scott, top of the key on the right side, Barney Mines. Mines looks inside to Mitchell Anderson. And the rebound is pulled out by Leo Routens. Bradley goes dry on their first trip to the well. Into the near corner, Tony Bruin underneath. Eric Sanifer with the basket in Syracuse has a 2-0 lead and they're pressing full court. Donald Reese in traffic over the timeline, three on one break. Dishes it off to Mitchell for the basket. Mitchell Anderson with his first basket of the night, and we are tied at two apiece. Up over the timeline, Gene Walder against Bradley man-to-man -man defense. Switches around, gets it off to Bruins. Bruins against uh, a deflection and a steal. Donald Reese coming down, and he's hammered. Donald Reese is hammered by Andre Hawkins, and that's going to be the first on Andre Hawkins. Andre Hawkins, big kid, 6'8", 240 pounds, gets a freshman though, and he will uh, he will commit silly fouls. This one right here, he's just going to slam Donald Reese. He is a very physical player. As we see him coming down the court here, he's going to make sure Donald Reese does not shoot the layup, and he does it, does a good job there. Hawkins is 6'8", 240, and a freshman from Melbourne, New York. Donald Reese, DR at the free throw line with a pair. 60% free throw shooter, and he missed it. A lot of arms waving in the uh, end zone there by the students and town folk. And uh, they'll give the Bradley free throw shooters a lot of trouble tonight. Donald missed the both and the rebound comes off to Syracuse. Long lead pass, nearly deflected. From the corner, jumper no good and the rebound to Barney Mines. Mines, the sky, the third. Can't get it, but he got the foul. And a foul is going to be on Gene Waldron. That's going to be the first on Waldron. And a second team foul against the Orange Men. Very interesting seeing uh, David come down on the break here. Now Bradley gets, uh, gets out on the break and will fast break with the Orange Men. We did run against the vaunted San Francisco fast break in Hawaii. It looks like we're going to try to run on Syracuse tonight. David Thurkill at the free throw line, 6'7", senior from St. Louis. 70% free throw shooter will be at the line to shoot a pair. And he made it. He'll get another one. All three points to Donald Reese. Until, uh, first point of the night for third kill. Second toss is good. Third down with two points. Ian Mitchell with Bradley's four, and the Braves lead it by a pair. Of the timeline, Gene Walden against Willie Scott, changes directions, and Willie picks up the personal foul. Foul on Willie Scott, his first, the team's first. Willie's going to have a little matchup problem tonight with 33, Gene Waldron. Here's He's a look a at it again. Well, go ahead. Yeah, well, he's 6'3", 170, and uh, Willie, of course, 5'11", going to have a little problem there. Routens off the inbounds to Sandifer. Back in the corner to Routens. Won't get it. Rebound third kill off the tip from Reese, and the Braves coming down three on three, and they're going to wait. Back out in front, Willie Scott, the roadrunner, looking over the 2-3 zone. Anderson Scott. Barney Mines, near corner, back out in front to Willie Scott. Donald Reese almost kicked it in, and the rebound to Routens. Ahead of the break, all the way down, Sandifer, way up and get it. Eric Sandifer with a basket and four points. Syracuse thought they had a deflection. Sandifer really pleading the case to the jury, didn't get it. Three officials all from the ACC tonight. Syracuse, 
using that full court pressure. Third kill to Reese Bradley. No trouble with it again. Reese takes it all the way down. He's tough. That's the first on Donald Reese. Not a smart foul. He well, didn't pull up. As we look at it here, Donald Reese was trying to dish off, and he just did it too late. That's got to be a jump stop at the free throw line to give it the one to two wings. That's the first on Donald, second on Bradley. In the lane, pretty moving on the roll. Gene Waldron gives Syracuse the lead, and Bradley right back. Mitchell Anderson, too long. And the rebound is pulled out by Waldron. Waldron ahead of the break to Routen. Routen's underneath by Bruins, missed it. Rebound batted out in front. Pulled back out by Waldron. Syracuse for the basketball, looking over Bradley man-to-man -man defense. Routen, spin move. Drops a pass off down low, deflected, loose out of bounds, Bradley ball. Out of bounds to Bradley, 17-15 to go in the first half of play. Willie Scott going to bring it up court. Bradley down three on three. Barney Mines, no. Rebound tip again by Willie Scott, and it won't fall in Syracuse with the rebound. In traffic, a reach-in going to be called on Willie Scott. That's going to be the second foul on Willie Scott. Take a look at it again. There it was. Willie just getting the hands in where they shouldn't have been. And it'll be out of bounds. Orange men control. They lead the ball game 6-4. to four. Gene Waldron will trigger off the inbounds. He's looking for some help. Kicks it out to Bruin. Bruin to Routen. Routens inside the paint. Deflected and third kill with the basketball. Third kill coming up. Three on three to DR. Donald Reese with the basket. His first of the night. And we're tied again at six apiece. Waldron. Near side to Bruin against Barney Mines. Barney went for the swipe. Return pass from Routon. He missed it. The rebound is returned up and in by Andre Hawkins. Andre Hawkins with his first basket of the night. And Nick Versace can't believe it. He's looking for some help on the defensive end. Syracuse really having their own way, Joe, offensively. They're getting inside against Bradley's big three. That's right. Well, that time Barney went for the steal and let Bruin get in, and uh, we can't let that happen, but they are a great shooting team. I'll get into that a little later. David Thirdkill from the right corner gets the basket down. He's got three points, four points now, and Bradley has tied it all up again at eight apiece. Four minutes into this basketball game. Gene Walton into the near corner, Sandifer. Tries to loop the back door. Bruin won't get that one. The rebound again, no good, and Donald Reese muscles for the board. Ahead to Mitchell. Mitchell down two on two with third kill, and he's fouled. Good outlet pass that time, Dan. Good break, another foul. Bradley goes to the line. Here's the replay here. Check a look at it again. Mitchell's coming down. He's got third kill on the right wing on a beautiful two-on-one breakaway, and there's the personal foul on Waldron. That is his second. Third kill will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. The Sheriff, two out of two from the line tonight, missed that one. The student cheering section, as you're looking at your TV screen, is right behind the basket. And the students are just back from spring break. They're rowdy. Third makes one out of two, and we're going to have a timeout. We have a timeout on the floor with 15.43 to go in the first half. Our score, Bradley 9 and Syracuse 8. Don Saltzman is your Democratic candidate for the new 92nd Representative District. Don Saltzman is a member of the Committee for the Aging, sponsoring legislation for utility relief for the aged and disabled. I urge you to return my friend, Don Saltzman, to Springfield. He has earned the respect and trust of the voters and of his fellow legislators. In these trying times, we need a man of Don's courage and honesty to represent us. I'm Don Saltzman, and I appreciate your vote on March the 16th. Out here, a thunderstorm rolls in fast, sometimes too fast. And when they're taken care of, it's your turn. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountain.
live at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Dan Swaney and Joe D'Alfonso. Joe, you got interesting stat over there. Well, we were talking a little while ago about uh, Syracuse having their own way on offense. They are a great shooting team. They're shooting 53% on the year. And get these numbers, Sanford 56, Bruin 51, Ralton 51, Peyton, who's not starting 54, uh, Hawkins 62. They like to get the ball inside. They like to get the high percentage shot. And that's what we're trying to do on Bradley uh, with the Braves. If Bradley tries to go for the steal at midcourt, they're just going to break to the basket, try to get it inside. And we can't let them do that. Bradley leading 9-8, and they're going to show some pressure defense for the first time tonight. Syracuse looks at the Bradley defense. And David Thurkill in the backcourt. They're going to do a half-court trap. There they go. Waldron near side to... Uh, Hayton just checked into the ball game. Hayton looked, had an ocean. Bradley back into his zone now, wants to get over the timeline. Leo Robbins won't get the bounce and the rebound to David Thurkill. Bradley doing a pretty good job on the defensive boards. Anderson, Reese. Donald Reese with four points on the night. Bradley now with their biggest lead at three and 11 to eight. And the Syracuse fans come to life. Leo Robbins into the far corner to uh, Sandifer. Underneath, they're going to have a holdout foul called on Barney Mines. Barney Mines, tough, tough assignment tonight with, uh, with Red Bruin. He's just going to bomb all around, a master of picks, a master of a, a shuffle down underneath. He's going to have a hard time containing him and keeping the ball away. Out of bounds to Syracuse, the Orangemen trail in the ball game, 11 to 8. Leo Routens to Waldron, Payton back off to Waldron. Routens, Bradley staying comfortable in that 2-3 zone. Payton got it. Ron Payton, who averages 10.5 points a ball game, gets his first bucket of the night. Mitchell Anderson comes back for the silencer. And he's got four points. Bradley by three again at 13-10. to 10. Leo Routens, 14-37 for the ball game's first half. Payton, back to Routens. Around the Sheriff, puts up the shot, and he nearly missed everything. Reese to Scott on the rebound. Willie dishes to Mitchell. Rebound Barney Mines. Barney Mines with his first basket of the night. And Bradley by five now at 15 to 10. Waldron. Waldron, a 6'3 sophomore from Long Island City. Around. Bradley back into man-to-man -man defense. In the corner, Waldron. Waldron with four, Bradley throws it away. That's a play that Syracuse will use a lot on made baskets. If uh, something, they haven't done it tonight, but sometimes Hawkins will get the ball out of the net and just throw it the length of the court, and that'll take care of the pressure. Bradley does it on occasion, that time it didn't work. Dayton leading Illinois, 18-16, first half. Donald Reese steals the inbounds play. Willie Scott to Barney Mines, pulls up, puts up, got it. Barney Mines with four, Bradley with a five-point lead again at 17-12. Two-three zone for Braves right now. Fans come to life. Sandifer on the near right side, Red Bruin. Back out in front, they work around the perimeter. Bradley packing in, and there was a pick. Mitchell rubbed out the pick nicely, and then a bad pass. Willie Scott and the Braves are down four on one. Scott to Mines, won't get the roll, and a rebound to Syracuse and a foul. And Barney Mines picks it up, and that is his second personal foul. And it's the 15th foul on the Braves in the first half. I'll repeat that basic basketball. The person leading the fast break is going to stop at the free throw line and dish it off. As you see, we had four Braves underneath the basket on the replay and didn't get a good shot against one man. And then Barney got the reach in on the replay. You saw it. Boise Winters going to check in for the Red and White gang. Red Bruins back out in front. Left side, Peyton. Bradley staying comfortable in that 2-3 zone. Hosting up on the inside now, Sean Kierens. Kierens is a big kid, 6'8 sophomore. He drops a pass off down low for Payton, who gets the basket in and picks up the foul. Ron Payton with four points. Let's take a look at it again. Underneath, Mitchell swiped at the basketball, couldn't get it. And the foul on David Thirdkill got a little flush before he got the basketball. The scoreboard has 50 Donald Reese, and so we'll go with that until we get corrected. That would be Reese's second. That's three Braves with two fouls each, Scott, Mines, and Reese. Now they're changing it to Thirdkill. Okay, there we go. 
So no matter which way we go, well, we came out of it better with that. And at the free throw line will go Ron Payton. Payton's free throw on the way, and he won't get that one. And the rebound in the lane to Kieran's. David Third kill with the board and kicks the quick up to Reese. Reese from Scott won't get it. The rebound tip comes off the Syracuse. They're on the fly, four on three. Red Brewers, and he's fouled by Third kill. Race horse, race horse basketball right now at both ends. Here's the foul on Third kill as he went up with a good defensive play. Got the ball, but got him with the body also. Got a little body, and... Uh, Dick Versace had a little chew with one of the officials here just a minute ago, wondering why some fouls were being called at one end of the floor and not the other. Well, particularly against and, uh, the moving screen against uh, Red Bruin, who's coming around and picking for the shooter on the weak side. He thinks it's a moving screen. Bruin gets the first, gets the first one down. He'll get another one. 17-15, Bradley's five-point lead now down to two. And a chance to make it one. 12-41 for the first half. He missed the second one. Boise winners with a rebound. To Willie Scott. And the road runner will push it up. 5'11 junior from Chicago King High School. Donald Reese, Boise winners. Far on the right side, Willie Scott pulls the trigger for the first time. Mitchell Anderson follows. And the rebound to Syracuse. Sandifer to Waldron. And Waldron against man to man. Down the lane, got caught in the air. Dished it off the carries against the basket. And we're all tied at 17 apiece with 12.09 to go in the first half. Willie Scott. Donald Reese inside third to the hoop for the basket and a chance for the trifecta. David, third kill with a good, strong move to the basket. Here it is again. Watch it. Takes it up despite getting fouled by Tony Bruin. And third kill. It was on Red Bruin. Third kill now with uh, seven points in the first half. And he'll go to the free throw line with a chance for a three-point play and a chance to put Bradley up by a three points. Bradley offense looks sharp tonight, Dan. They're getting down the floor. Donald Reese has beaten Hawkins down when he was in the game. Every time down the floor is just beating him to the punch and getting out on the break as the rest of the Braves were. Third kill gets the free throw down. The three-point play puts Bradley ahead three, 20 to 17 leading the Syracuse Orangemen at the Carrier Dome with 11.59 to go, and we'll be right back. Out here, a thunderstorm rolls in fast, sometimes too fast. And when they're taken care of, it's your turn. Push. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name, Bush. Head for Bush, head for the mountains. Thatch can choke a lawn. You can remove thatch by messing up your lawn with a power rake, or messing up your back, or you can use the self-propelled snapper high vac with the economical thatcherizer attachment. The result: a beautiful revitalized lawn, and you come out in great shape too. Snapper. Get a free Thatcherizer with the purchase of a Snapper self-propelled or riding mower in Eureka from Roseman Small Engine and in Canton from Lenz Motorcycle. Back here, let's take a look at that last play just before we broke for commercial. David Thurkill, good, strong power move to the hold, Joe. Well, you know, Third Kill is a thoroughbred, and he's, uh, he's been looked at by the pro scouts all year long, and uh, that's the kind of play they're looking for. How strong can he play underneath? And I'm sure, you know, the ones here are taking notes on how fast Donald Reese at 6'9", 240 can get down the floor, and how agile Mitchell Anderson is. Uh, Bradley, if those three guys play to their capabilities, are going to be in a good position to win this game. Illinois leading Dayton 22 to 20 with seven minutes to go in the first half. We'll keep you posted on that Illini score as well, so keep it right here. We'll... Keep you in the know of everything you want to know about basketball in the area tonight. Well pressured by the Braves again. Third kill at the point of a diamond crest. Leo Ruff. They're going to trap at midcourt. They go the alley. Oh! <laughs> Tony Bruin brings the house down. We'll have to look at that one again. 20 to 19. Bradley's lead down to one. And that brought everybody on their feet. Willie Scott against the 2-3. Boise winners, the silencer. 
22-19, Radley leading it by three. What a thunder jam that was. That's the way to beat the press. <laughs> that's a hot, that's why they've got such high shooting stats, Joe. There's Bruins who just got that slam dunk. Tries to lob a pass down low, deflected out of bounds, Bradley Ball. A lot of officials in the stands don't think so, but uh, the Braves collapsed underneath. They got a hand on the ball, out of bounds to the Bradley Braves. Now they're looking at pressure. Donald Reese gets it into David Third kill to Willie Scott. Scott drives around his man and takes it into the attacking zone. Back out in front of Bradley's going to wait. David Third kill catches up with the offense. Underneath Donald Reese and he's fouled. Foul's going to be called and Ron Payton, and that's going to be his first. Good look inside by Mitchell Anderson that time, giving it to Donald Reese, who posts up so strong, takes it to the hoop. Payton fouls him. Donald will get two throws. Payton actually got him on the way up on that one. Reese will be at the line for a pair, and he made it. DR with the first one down, and he's got five points on the night. Checking back into the ball game is Andre Hawkins. Hawkins, a 6'8 freshman from Melbourne, New York. And sitting down is uh, Sean Cairns, a 6'8 sophomore from Inwell, New York. A lot of the players, of course, from Syracuse, from New York State. Donald Reese, second free throw, and he made a both. Bradley now leading by five. Matches their biggest lead of the night at 24 to 19. Again, they go to the half-court trap. Into the attacking zone, far corner, Bruins. To Rout. Leo Rout with his first basket of the night. He's averaging 13 and a half points a ball game. And it's 24-21. Bradley now back to a three-point lead. Boise winners, David Thurkill. Bradley playing catch against man-to-man -man pressure, Willie Scott. Willie Scott, who had 19 points in the win over American University, cashes in on his first two of the night. And Bradley back up by five again at 26-21. Tony Bruin, Waldron in the middle. Bradley in that 2-3 zone. They've changed off from 2-3 to man-to-man -to -man most of the night. Third kill gets the long rebound. And to Willie Scott. We're midway in the first half. Ten minutes to go. Willie over the timeline. Mitchell Anderson back out in front of Willie. Bradley kicking it around. Willie pulls the trigger again. This one's long. And the rebound is pulled out by Tony Bruins. His lead pass too long, and Willie Scott goes and gets it. Vic Versace yelling that Willie moved the ball. That was a little bit out of his range that time. He wants a good shot. Uh, Bradley's up five. This would be the biggest lead of the game. If they can get it down. Willie Scott, Mitchell. They post third kill up inside. Boise from the corner. Uh, Boise's come with bullets in his gun tonight. Unbelievable shot. Two shots for that freshman. Giving us a big lift. Especially the first one which came after the dunk. 28-21. Bradley in seven. Leo Routens. Back out in front to Waldron. Tony Bruins, they call him red. Tried to force feed it inside. It's got to be a three-second call. And a traveling call. No basket. Dayton leads Illinois. 26-22. Let's take a look at it again. Here's the walk. One, two. That's right. And uh, Bruin was in there three seconds uh, to boot. So Bradley playing excellent defense. And now with their only New Yorker on the roster, Eddie Harris in the ball game at the point, along with uh, the other four starters. And they got some guys who put it up now. Man-to-man -man pressure. And there's the offensive foul on Eddie Harris. Eddie with his first personal foul of the night just checked into the ball game. That's a, usually how substitutes will come in. They will put up a shot early or uh, be over-exuberant and commit a foul. Uh, that's uh, pretty common, especially with a freshman. 9.05. The clock isn't running. Now it is. It didn't run for a good four or five seconds. Syracuse working around the perimeter. Tony Bruins back out in front. Underneath. Take the shot up on the reverse. That's Ronnie Payton. That's Eric Sandifer. And Sandifer's got six, and it's 28-23. A five-point Bradley Lee. Braves with the ball. And he has. Boy, would you think he'd want to go back to New York. Boise, Eddie Harris against the man-to-man -man pressure from Gene Waldron. Boise winners. Gets his own board. And got the roll. Boise winners. Six big points that's coming off the bench a few minutes ago. Why did I call him a freshman? He's a sophomore now. That's for sure. Syracuse down seven with the basketball. Gene Waldron. Bradley in a 2-3 zone. Leo Rout. Back to Waldron. Looks right at David Thurkill. Near corner, Hawkins back off to Waldron. 
Waldron, 6'3", sophomore from Long Island City. The Red Bruins, Waldron. Gene Waldron with six. And it's 30 to 25. Bradley's lead again now, five points. Now there's a shot we would like them to take off their offense. Waldron not that good a shooter, or 45% on the year. We've got another timeout with 7.55 to go in our first half. Our score is Bradley 30 and the Syracuse Orangemen 25. How would you like to become a millionaire too? Yes, it is quite possible, depending on how much and how soon you start saving in a University National Bank individual retirement account, you could become a millionaire. Perhaps best of all, your IRA funds are not taxable until you retire, and then in all likelihood you'll be paying less tax. Get the facts on your secure tomorrow with an individual retirement account from University National Bank and see how easy becoming a millionaire can be. Essence, the curiously refreshing sound that signals that a drink is about to explode with taste. Schweppes Essence makes Schweppes mixers a far cry from anything you've ever used to dignify a drink. It's why we call Schweppes the taste maker. Tonic water, bitter lemon, club soda, ginger ale. Back here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, Bradley leading at 30 to 25, 7.55 for the first half. There's Dave Snell, he's doing the broadcast on WMBD Radio. Wave hi, Dave, you're on TV. There you are. He's across the floor from us here, almost directly across the floor. Illinois trailing Dayton, 31-28 at the Assembly Hall. And we'll keep you posted on that score. That's down to maybe five minutes to go in the first half. We'll certainly keep you posted on that one as this one progresses. Bradley will have the basketball. We're going to see full court pressure now, Joe. David Thurkill gets around the trap and brings it up over the timeline. Addy Harris. Man-to-man -man pressure by the Orangemen now. Harris looks inside to Mitchell. Jump hook. Boise winners. Got two tips and they're going to get in for the foul. That's going to be the first on Boise. Well, the Syracuse Orange freshman Manual. from Gage Park. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, uh, Syracuse will be in the bonus right now. They'll be shooting throws. A great effort. That's how he got his third basket just a little while ago as we see the follow-up. Uh, he followed up his missed shot. That time went up, you know, had a little jump hook, didn't get it in, and went after it real well. Syracuse in the bonus now. At the free throw line will go Andre Hawkins. Hawkins on the air, a 69% free throw shooter. He's got two points in the ball game, and this is his first trip to the free throw line tonight. The lead in is no good. And the rebound of Boise winners. Winners to Eddie Matthews, who just checked in during the timeout, during the dead ball period. And Syracuse goes back into the 2-3 zone. Boise winners to Eddie Matthews. The Brimfield Bomber seen his first action in a long time. Back off to Matthews, or to Anderson, nearly telegraphed it away. Victor Chase uh, yelling 1-4 for the offense. That'll try to free uh, either David or Mitchell down underneath. 7-18 for the first half. Bradley 30 to 25. If he just joined us, the Braves have led it all the way. Matthews to Mitchell. Mitchell in a double team trap and in trouble. The Boise winners. Back off to Matthews down the lane. There's Donald Reese and there's a foul. And the foul is going to be called on Routens. And on Routens, that is his first and the 16th foul against the Orangemen. Let's take a look at it again. Excellent pass by Eddie Matthews inside. Donald Reese again posting up. That time he took the low spot on the 1-4 offense instead of David. Got the ball, went up strong. Donald Reese made the first one. Donald has made three in a row since missing his first two. 31-25, the Braves by a half a dozen. There's the student cheering section, and Donald missed the second one. And the rebound is pulled out of there by Sandifer. Sandifer gets it off to Walden, and Walden over the timeline. Sandifer averages 17-1. Has three baskets, but he's been pretty quiet offensively tonight for the yard, but he's got the ball right now. Bradley in a 2-3 zone. Backdoor Bruins, and he's fouled by Donald Reese. That's the third on Donald Reese, or is it the second on Donald Reese? I have him for two because they took one we away had, that's from That's right, we had to change. Well, here it is again. Pinned it to the board, but got him with the body. Got him with the forearm on the way up, and at the free throw line will go Tony Bruin. 
Rowan on the night, uh, one out of two from the line, three points. He is a 76% free throw shooter. This team shoots 72% from the line, and that is very high uh, with NCAA standards. Uh, I'm surprised they've missed as many as they have so far. Donald Reese checking out Barney Mines into the ballgame. So Bradley on the floor now with Mines, Anderson, Winters, third kill, and Eddie Matthews. Second toss is good. So Bruins got four, and it's 31-26. Bradley's lead is five again. Third kill. Long lead pass, Boise Winters, the Braves two on two now. Barney Mines won't get it, and the rebound is pulled out by Bruins. Bruins gets it off to Gene Waldron, the sophomore from Long Island City. Waldron's now, they can cut it down to three points with a basket. I think the fans know that. Bruins, Eddie Matthews cut him off. Back over to Routen. In the middle, third kill with an inflection and a steal. Third kill coming up now, four on two. Bradley break into the corner, Eddie Matthews. The Brimfield Bomber got it. Eddie Matthews with his first basket in a long time. I hate, to repeat, seven I hate to repeat myself, Dan, but that time David stopped at the free throw line, fished it off, he didn't charge, Eddie got the wide open shot and made it. Sandifer, Barney Mines goes out to cover up. Routens is all alone. Boise Winters sweeps the board and kicks it out to Barney Mines, and the Braves are running again, and Barney pulls the trigger. And now everything the Braves are doing is going right. And the Orangemen won a timeout. Bradley has extended their lead to nine with 5.43 to play in the first half. Our score is Bradley 35, Syracuse 26. Here's a solid deal on a solid Datsun truck. For a limited time only, Jim Smith Datsun has reduced the price on Peoria's most popular import trucks. This deluxe five-speed little hustler is just $66.24, $400 off the sticker price. And this King Cab Diesel, with 15 inches of space behind the reclining seats, is just $79.74. Save $400. And with every Datsun truck you buy during this offer, you'll get this bedliner or this topper absolutely free. Save on Datsun trucks now at Jim Smith Datsun. Images. Reflections of reality. Today, Zenith System 3 is close to bringing you the perfect image with the sharpest picture in Zenith history, with four speakers for superb fidelity, with 112 channel total capability. Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. For the best deals on a new Zenith, visit Rick's TV, 315 Court Street in Pekin. Rick's is the largest Zenith dealer within 132 miles of Pekin. Take a look at that last basket, Barney Mines, Joe. I tell you, Barney shot it with confidence because he was the only one down there. If he's going to shoot it with no one in the basket, he better make it. But he did shoot it with confidence. He's a streak shooter, a streak player. When he gets his rhythms, everything's going down like that one did. And that was the reason for the timeout. Syracuse wanted to pull Bradley out of that rhythm they'd gotten into. Here we go. Bradley's lead is nine now. Hawkins into the attacking zone. Boise Winters goes around him. Routens underneath, stolen away, David Third kill. And now Bradley can go up 11 points at the five and a half minute mark in the first half. Eddie Matthews against Waldron gets it off to David Thurkill. Thurkill directs traffic against man and man pressure. Back on to Eddie Matthews. Dick Versace walks in front of the junior and talking once in a while. Underneath what? Foul on Payton. Foul going to be called on Ronnie Payton and that is going to be his second. I think Boise winners will go to the free throw line. Both teams in the bonus now from here on out. Peyton was uh, trying to guard Anderson underneath uh, in, the Bra in the Braves two game and uh, was hooking him a little bit so he couldn't get position. Now Mitchell go to the line. Mitchell on the night, four points. 72% free throw shooter. That's number one. Bradley's lead is now 10 again at 36-26. 5-11 to go in the first half. Mitchell will get another one. 6'8", senior from Chicago Metro. Oh, got them both. Bradley playing a good ball game. 37-26. Shooting very well, and giving the uh, Orangeman only one shot on a defensive board. Tony Bruin gets it off to Sandifer. Back out in front to Waldron. Bruin. Bradley in that 2-3 zone, leading by 11. They can afford to do this now and protect people from foul trouble on the road. Waldron. Far side to Bruins, back out in front to Waldron. Ronnie Payton, the Barney Mines hanging, Andre Hawkins in the paint. 
Andre Hawkins with four points. Back to a nine-point game now, 37-28, and a steal off the inbounds play. Waldron down, lays it up, and misses it. Tony Bruins with the reverse return. Tony Bruin now with six, and it's 37 to 30. Bradley having trouble now over the timeline, Eddie Matthews. Want to welcome our friends from Champaign who have just joined us here at the Carrier Dome, where Bradley has a 7-point, 37-30 lead. But a moment ago, we had an 11-point Bradley lead. Joe D'Alfonso, Bradley Sports Information Director, is here. Well, it was a case of uh, David Thurkill misreading the defense, and he threw it right into Tony Bruin's hands. And uh, we're going to have a break, but we're going to keep it right here. We are going to keep it right that. here. Syracuse put on the pressure, and uh, their third kill misread the defense and put it right into their hands. Well, again, welcome our friends from Champaign who are just joining us here at, your, at the break in your ball game, Dayton and Illinois. We're here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, second round NIT game. Bradley leading Syracuse 37 to 30 with four minutes and 19 seconds to go in the uh, first half. Now Bradley had an 11 or 12 point lead just a minute ago and all of a sudden Syracuse has turned on some defense. I'm Dan Swaney, Bradley Sports Information Director Joe D'Alfonso is by my side this evening and Joe Bradley until just that last flurry of plays has really played very well here at this beautiful arena. That's right, uh, the Braves have shot very well, they've gotten off on the break, they've given Syracuse only one shot usually when they get down court, and they've uh, stolen the ball inside a lot because the, the Orangemen like to get the ball inside for the good percentage shot, and Bradley has collapsed on that, came up with five or six steals, got the break off and got some easy shots. Uh, we did have an 11-point lead, as you mentioned, just a little while ago, but Hawkins uh, muscled inside for a bucket. Uh, third kill threw it away on the press. Bruin came down on offensive board and laid it in, and then Eddie Matthews turned it over on a travel when he got two times across the mid-court line. So twice in a row, the press has worked, turned the ball over to the Orangemen. The lead is still seven, and we'll go right back into the 2-3 zone and try to play tough enough defense right now. And I tell you what, Joe, the last four minutes and 19 seconds of this first half is very important for both basketball teams. Syracuse had to have a spurt like that or else Bradley was going to be in a situation to be able to start dictating tempo in the second half. And uh, when you're on the road and being able to dictate tempo, you've got two very important factors going in your favor. That's right. And uh, the Braves uh, were on their way with a lot of good rhythms going offensively and defensively. Jim Beheim took a very good timeout at the five and a half minute mark. And they came out with a little different look on the full court press, stole the ball twice, and now they got a chance to get within five. Estimated 20,000 in the Carrier Dome tonight, the largest crowd ever to see a Bradley basketball game. Syracuse brings it up. This is Gene Waldron. Bradley in that 2-3 zone. Eric Sandifer has got six points in the first half. The Tony Red Bruins back out in front to Waldron. They work the perimeter inside Hawkins. Near side Ronnie Payton to the baseline. Mitchell Anderson cut him off. He turns the pass back out in front and Waldron will tie again. 3.57 and the clock spins in the first half. Waldron. And now it's a five-point game. 37-32. Syracuse has scored the last six points and Bradley's going to run. Willie Scott back in at the timeout. Now Bradley's back on the floor with their original starters minus Donald Reese. And Boise Winters is in in his place now. Syracuse in a man-to-man. -man. Willie Scott. To Barney Mines. Mitchell Anderson post low. They look for him. A reach in. Tony Bruins picks up the personal foul and on red that is his second. Both teams are in the bonus. And at the free throw line will go Barney Mines. Mines on the night with six points. 6'3", junior from Joliet. He actually played his high school basketball at Providence New Lenox with Walter Downing. And Barney Mines on the air is a 75% free throw shooter. He and Willie Scott, the best the Braves have. Syracuse trying to dictate play of their own now. Uh, Two-timing in the front court, double-teaming on the sidelines when they can. At that time, Bruin got caught reaching in. But they're putting two-time pressure on the ball and man-to-manning underneath. 38-32, Bradley by a half a dozen, three and a half to go on the first half. Barney Mines second free throw, and he made a both. Bradley 39-32, back to a seven-point lead. They led by as many as 11 here in the first half. Gene Waldron to Bruins, to Waldron. Sandifer, Bradley in the 2-3 zone. Down the lane, forcing the issue. Back out in front, Sandifer, Gene Waldron. Ronnie Payton, and David Third Kill sweeps. Third kill waits for the traffic to clear, and the big 6'7 senior from St. Louis deals it off to Willie Scott, and the Roadrunner will bring it up over the timeline for the Braves. 
Barney Mines in the middle of reach around foul on Alex Hawkins. It went to go inside David Third kill, and you can see if Third would have gotten that basketball, Joe, it was off to the race. Well, they were still in the two time, except uh, Hawkins, Andre Hawkins had Third kill man to man underneath, and he's foul thrown. He's a freshman, he overreacts. There it is right there on the replay. He's going to reach in to deny the ball, and he got caught. Hawkins is a big one, 6'8, 240, and a freshman. And checking into the ball game is Sean Kieran, 6'8, 225, and a sophomore. Only one senior in the starting rotation for Syracuse. Yeah, they're a young team, they're very talented, and uh, like I said, 11 straight years in postseason play, and they got over, everybody except one person coming back next year. Third kill's five out of six from the line now. He has nine points, chance to go into doubles for the Sheriff, and he got it. 41-32, and Bradley's 11-point lead is almost rebuilt. Two minutes and 52 seconds to go here in the first half. Dan Sweeney from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Second round NIT action. And we'll mention something very interesting about a possible third round game here as we break for our halftime show. With our friends down in Champaign and all of East Central Illinois. In the middle, Routon's got hung in the air and he's fouled and the foul's on Barney Mines. And that's number three on Barney Mines. Interesting call there. John Moreau, Jim Birch, Robert Taylor, all the ACC uh, uh, calling this game. Barney Mines did foul, but the out official didn't see it. It took the underneath official to call it through a maze of players. So you got to wonder about that. Barney on the bench now in favor of Eddie Matthews, 231. Look for Bradley to spread it out a little bit. In fact, Eddie Harris is about to come in the ball game. That will give Bradley three point guards in the game. The free throw by Routens is no good, and he's the best free throw shooter on the team, almost an 80% free throw shooter. And the rebound to Bradley. They have a chance to go up 11 again. Eddie Matthews. Boise winners, the freshman from Chicago, Willie Scott, way out on the wing on the right side, deep in the corner to Matthews. Matthews hooks it out in front of the third and tried to go down low to Mitchell and he's fouled. And they got Anderson for it. They got Mitchell as he tried to establish position. That's the first on the All-American from Chicago Metro. And we'll go to the other end and shoot bonus tosses. Mitchell uh, on a tee game that time, but the pass was a little high and behind him. He tried to retrieve it and had to go over Bruin to get it. Uh, Tony Bruin uh, missed his uh, free throw attempt earlier. It might have been his only one of the night. He's one out of four from the line tonight, Joe. So two, of, uh, two out of four, I'm sorry. He is a master of 6'4". Uh, he's a master of the, uh, the baseline and getting position underneath, scoring points and, uh, against players who are so much taller than he is. And then when he goes to the line so often, he usually makes him 78% from the line this year. Bruin is uh, a 6'5 junior from Astoria, New York. Adam both down. And it's 41-34. Bradley's lead is 7 again. They've led the entire route. David Third kill and a double team trap, and he's in trouble. And he gets it off to Willie Scott, and Willie's going to bring it up. Eddie Harris from Brooklyn, New York. Boy, would he love to go back home. Love to Willie Scott. Willie to Eddie Harris. Harris, number 23, David Third kill at the free throw line. David's playing a good ball game. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve points for the Sheriff. And Bradley leads it by nine again at 43-34. Kieran. Left wing, Sandifer. Kieran's had the board deflected. Right back to Sandifer. Bradley still being tough on the board. Bruins follows. Willie Scott's got the rebound long, and he's coming down two on two. Wisely waits for the offense to set up. Eddie Harris bombs away. Eddie Harris definitely feels the Queens, his hometown, right down the street. 11-point lead again for Bradley. 45-34, we're nearing the minute mark in the first half. Kieran. Rebound Mitchell Anderson. Anderson to third kill, and I tell you, for Syracuse, the best thing that can happen now is halftime. That's right. Bad shot right there by Terrence. Bradley all over the boards, and now we'll look at a crisscross offense. Bradley, let's see if they try to hold a little bit. Willie Scott with 43 seconds to go in the first half to Mitchell Anderson. Back out in front to Eddie Harris. Willie Scott, Eddie Harris. Mitchell now dribbling the ball down to 30 seconds. They lob it down low to third kill. Third kill. With the basketball, now bounces it back out in front to uh, Willie Scott. Eddie Harris. 
17, 16, 15, 14, 13 seconds. And now Victor Chase says go. Eddie Harris. Cross court, Willie Scott. Willie, down the lane, got it! Willie with four, with two seconds, one second, and we have played the first half. And Bradley goes to the locker room with their biggest lead of the entire first half. And the Syracuse fans with a rousing round of boos. Bradley with a 13-point lead at the intermission. And Joe Bradley, the last three minutes, showed a great deal of poise for being on the road. That's right. We took good shots. We went after the boards. We took care of it coming up forward Here against their press. And there's Willie Scott with doing his imitation of uh, Gene Melchori, who started in the <laughs> NIT in 1950, 5'11", going to the hoop with all the trees, and uh, just did a great job. 13-point lead at halftime, and there's about 21,000 shocked folks right here in the Carrier Dome. Yeah, they're awfully quiet right now, Joe, and uh, we want to welcome our people back from Champaign again. Bradley, after having an 11-point lead slip away from him, down to a half a dozen, rebuilt it and actually improved on it here as we have come to the intermission. And Bradley leading at 47-34, 47 points in the first half. Not bad for the Bradley University Braves. We'll be back with some halftime activities, the scoring and summaries. Just a few minutes. Stay with us. Sometimes a simple river crossing isn't so simple. And when you've got him back, it's your turn. Bush. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for the Bush right? beer. Head for the mountains. Now that's what bread used to taste like. Now that's what bread used to taste like. What bread used to taste like is the sweeter, richer flavor of new Sunbeam Old Fashioned. Now that's what bread used to taste like. <laughs> Sunbeam Old Fashioned is the brand new bread from Sunbeam that tastes homemade. Look for new Sunbeam Old Fashioned today. Now that's what bread used to taste like. At Valley Ford, we've got rebates and incentives going on all over the place. Right now, you receive a rebate of $275 on the new front-wheel drive Escort and drive away for just $34.79 per week. That's assuming $500 down, cash or trade, and good credit toward the total purchase price of $51.87. And with Ford's new two-year maintenance free plan, on Escort you pay nothing but gasoline for the first 24 months or 24,000 miles. That's at Valley Ford, Auto Row in Pekin. Hi, I'm Judy Fraser, and I'm here to tell you a few things about the outlet that perhaps you didn't know. The Outlet is a store with fashions for both men and women. Fashions that are not seconds. In fact, 90% of the merchandise is first quality, with name brands and designer labels that you trust. But best of all, the Outlet sells merchandise at 20 to 50% below regular department store prices. So why pay more? Come to the Outlet where you can afford to look great. Back here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, I'm Dan Sweeney along with Joe D'Alfonso. Bradley leading it at the intermission by 13 big points at 47 to 34. We'll come back here in just a few minutes and give you a recap of what's been going on. First of all, let's go back to the news center. Jock Thomas is standing by. Jock, why don't you give us some of the highlights on the Illinois game? Okay, thank you, Dan, and we're going to do exactly that for you. Right now, let's get ready to roll those highlights of the Illinois game. Right now, they're losing at halftime by score of 35 to 30. Here's a look at some of the action that's going on over in the assembly hall down in Champaign right this evening. Dayton got on the scoreboard first and they had an 8 to 4 lead when Mike Kineski hit on that jumper right there. Then Kevin Conrad or put the Flyers up by 6 at the score at that time 10 to 4. Lou Henson an upset coach at that particular point in time. But then the fighting Illini came back. Derek Harper blocks that shot. Craig Tucker takes the ball down court, full length, puts it in, and the score at that point, Dayton 11, Illini 6. Then Craig Tucker misses on this jumper, but James Griffin was right there. He puts it back up in. Illini were now down by four. It just didn't seem like anything was going to go for Dayton. They had a chance there to put a basket up. They'll get another chance in just a moment here. You'll see it coming up. Everyone's fighting for the ball. There it goes. Then the fighting Illini get the rebound. They take it down court. 
Derek Harper then ends up putting it in for the Fighting Illini. The score at that particular point in time was Dayton 16, the Fighting Illini 12. And at halftime, Dayton is leading the Fighting Illini by a score of 35 to 30. The only other score we have for you in the NIT tonight at halftime, Purdue is leading Rutgers by a score of 39 to 25. And of course, as you know, the Bradley Braves are leading Syracuse by 13 points. The score, 47 to 34. That's it from the sports desk for now. We'll have more scores in the NIT later tonight in sports. Sundown. It's that time of day The sun fades away And the shadows Say slow down I'm sure glad this day's over Time to put aside The long day's ride And pass the good times around Head for the mountains. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Brewed for a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. Head for Bush beer. There's something exciting for everyone at the landmark Racket and Health Club. Racquetball. Handball and volleyball a full-size gymnasium for basketball, aerobic and cardiovascular classes, Nautilus equipment to meet your exercise needs, a running track, tanning room, saunas, jacuzzi, and masseuse, and a comfortable lounge to relax in, serving cold refreshments. Come in today for a tour and see for yourself. The Landmark Racket and Health Club, beautifully designed for your comfort and convenience. You know, there are still a few people around who think the water beds won't cut it. Well, water bed creations, we can cut it. This is just a little demonstration to show that even major accidents can be no problem with a properly installed safety liner. The water is retained within the frame so there can be no chance of damage to your carpet or home. So for answers to all your questions on water beds, stop by a water bed creations near you, where the rest is better and we're better than the rest. Back here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York, round two of the NIT has Bradley leading in, 47 to 34 at the intermission. Bradley being led by David Thirdkill with 12 points and Barney Mines with eight. And Joe Bradley had an 11 point lead, let it get away, built it back up and they're in a comfortable position now leading by 13. Well, we had a couple of people make big baskets. Uh, Boise Winters uh, made a big basket coming off the bench after Tony Bruin uh, jammed on, on, on our uh, trapping press. And we've got the crowd up. He came in and made a big basket, and Barney Mines and Third Kill both made two free throws apiece, and we got it, and they got it down to six. So we've had a couple of heroes here in the first half. I'll tell you what, Joe, while we're still getting our stats together here at halftime, let's go down to Champaign and join the University of Illinois and Dayton in that second round game, which right now is a surprise. Let's join Champaign, Dayton leading the University of Illinois 41 32. Here they are. For those of you joining us from WMBD and Peoria who have been watching the Bradley-Syracuse game, we're in the second half of the Assembly Hall. Dayton out in front of Illinois, 41 to 32. The hot shooting Flyers have dominated the action here in the second half. They had a lead at halftime of 35 to 30. And it led most of the way. Here's Roosevelt Chapman, a fine forward, averaging 18 points a game, going up, missed the shot but he was fouled. That's been the story the whole game. Uh, Illinois has not gotten any rebounds. In the first half, the Flyers out-rebounded Illinois 20-13, outshot them 53.8% from the field to 40% for the Illini. They can't get a shot to go down. They're not going to the boards, and they're in a lot of trouble right here. The game was, the game was tied seven times in the first half. The Illini led only 22-20. Well, there's the story, 17-02 remaining in this second round game of the National Invitation Tournament. And the Dayton Flyers, a veteran of NIT action, up by nine, 41-32, and threatening to go into double figures with that lead as Roosevelt Chapman goes to the free throw line. Chapman, with eight points for the evening, 
half of them from the free throw line. Yeah, he's four out of six at the line. Only two baskets. They've done a good job on him for the most part, but he slipped inside and caused a lot of problems as far as fouls have been concerned. Anthony Welch making his first appearance of the night for the Illini. A 6'9 freshman from Grand Rapids replaces Craig Tucker. Lou Hentz is just flat looking for somebody that can shoot the basketball. Chapman makes the first shot and it's 42 to 32. Dayton. 43-32. The Flyers by 11. And the crowd. Restless at this point. Anthony Welch inside Griffin. Turnaround jumper and it rimmed it. Montgomery comes up with it all. And the Illini still have the ball. Welch. Now looking out front to Harper. Shots are just not going down. Inside Griffin to Harper. Puts it in, but a foul call before that action. And Check they and see who. It may be McNally. If it is, it'll be four. Roosevelt Chapman picks up the foul. His first. Line I will have the ball out of bounds. Harper into Anthony Welch. Welch was recruited by Dayton. In fact, they went down to the wire with Illinois for his services. And they were looking at him as a possible 6'9 guard. Griffin baseline, short. Oh, they're just not going at all. Here's Kevin Conrad with the ball for Dayton. 16, 15 to go. And the Illini have a big turnaround ahead. McNally into Gorney. Back to McNally. Takes the jumper and doesn't go. Rebound, Perry Rain. Anthony Welch, shot's not there, McNally on him, looking, now to Harper. Well, I scored only two points in the second half, and he played nearly, now played four and a half minutes. Griffin, back to Welch, doesn't take it. Now Griff, he'll take it, and makes. He's got the shot, he's just got to make a few. Lead back to nine, 43-34. 12 points for Griffin. He's made all of his shots from just about that area, but he's probably made only about six out of probably 16 or so. Gorney throws it away. There's a break. Back here at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. First half scoring, Bradley being led by David Thirdkill with 12, eight for Barney Mines. Six apiece for Boise Winters and Mitchell Anderson. Seven points for Donald Reese. Four points for Willie Scott. And two points apiece for Eddie Matthews and for Eddie Harris. For Syracuse, eight points for Tony Bruin and eight points for Gene Waldron. Six out of Eric Sandifer. And four points apiece out of Andre Hawkins and Ronnie Payton. Sean Kierens and Leo Routens both have two. Leo Routens is averaging 13 and a half points. A ball game has been held to two here in the first half. Our score at halftime again, Bradley 47, Syracuse 34. We'll be right back with second half action in just a minute. For super extraordinary savings every day, it's Super X. Till now, saving at drugstores has meant waiting for specials. Toothpaste this week, shaving cream the next. Now Super X has changed all that with everyday low prices. Not once in a while or once in an aisle savings, but low prices every day, everywhere. So why wait for specials? Super X gives you low prices every day. Trust Super X where everyday low prices are everywhere. These are the laws of Illinois, and each mark is another time that the politicians can tax us. This is taxation without limitation, and the unlimited power to tax is a power to destroy. It's time we put a real limit on taxes right here in our state constitution. I'm John Daly, Republican for State Treasurer. I'll lead that crusade, but I'll need your help. Limiting taxes takes a new kind of leadership. Vote for Republican John Daly for State Treasurer. High octane hog chow. It's got an edge on other feeds. First off, it's richer, concentrated with plenty of balanced essential nutrients and, of course, high levels of energy. Finishes hogs an average seven days quicker than other rations. Produces 100 pounds more pork with every ton. Get the high octane performance edge now at your Purina dealer. 
corn growers will tell you, keep treating rootworms with the same chemicals. And one of these days, it may not stop them like it used to. But before you switch, you should know that Coulter, Diphenate, and Lorsban are all organophosphates, all in the same family. To hit rootworms with a different chemical, switch to Furidan. The only carbamate. Don't just switch brands, switch chemicals. Switch to Furidan from FMC. We are back at the Carrier Dome, ready for the final 20 minutes of play. Bradley leading by 13 here at the intermission, 47 to 34, and there are some people here other than us from Peoria. It's good That's to right. see that. Got a little fans here. Uh, Bradley looking at a 13-point lead at halftime. First five minutes, Dan, are going to be the, the most important five in the second half. I expect Syracuse to make two runs into the 13-point lead. One in the first 10 minutes of the half and one in the second 10 minutes of the half. And I don't know what it's going to be after 10 minutes, but I expect them to make two runs at Bradley. And it's going to be how we uh, look at those two and how we respond to them is going to tell the outcome of this game. First half shooting, Bradley was 17 for 30 from the floor for 57%, while Syracuse 15 out of 33 for 45%. I would say 57% in a place like this isn't too bad at shooting, Joe. Oh, no, we've gotten good <laughs> shots. That comes from uh, getting out on the break and, and, and getting the ball to inside. The good shooters like Donald Reese and David Thurkill. Uh, David in the first half, 3 of 3 from the field. Boise winners 3 of 5, and, and Reese underneath 2 of 3. So uh, we've gotten the ball inside and a place to make a lot of good shots. Dayton is leading Illinois now with 14 minutes to go. 43-38, that could be an upset. Ready to go. Some of the 20,000 back in their seats are standing up and we're ready to play basketball. Here on WMBD Channel 31 out of Peoria. Syracuse. Lost the opening jump ball, starts things out here. Eric Sandifer. Bradley opens up in a 2-3 zone. Red Bruin. Got it. Red Bruin with 10 points. David Thurkill, who was not in the starting combination, will come in immediately. Willie Scott returns at the other end. That's a big basket. Maybe the biggest of the first five minutes of the second half. Willie Scott put it down, and we had to have one. That keeps the run from coming at you. Eric Sandifer, Bradley on the floor with Scott Vines, Reese Anderson, and Boise, and Reese takes it away to Willie Scott. He's coming down with Barney Mines on his wing, and Willie gets the roll and gets the basket. And Willie starts things off to Bradley in the second half with two quick baskets, and now a 15-point lead. Just like he ended it in the first half with a scoop shot layup. Leo Routes in the paint. Has to be in there more than three seconds. We have a deflection out of bounds, Syracuse. David Thurkill came out of the locker room uh, late with his uh, with one shoe off, getting a little bandage on that hurt ankle. He's now got his shoe back on and in the ball game. Boise Winters is out for the baseline route. Went too far under, and Donald Reese intimidated, got the basketball to Barney Mines all the way down, missed it. Underneath one, a traveling call against David Thurkill. Two people had their hands on the ball at the same time. That's automatic travel. We played just over a minute here in the second half. Bradley leading 51-36. Tony Bruins will not get the roll. Willie Scott with the rebound to the weak side. And he stops and waits for the traffic to clear, and the roadrunner will set it up. Man-to-man -man pressure for the Orange men. Barney Mine. Donald Reese. Big 6-9 center. Anderson. Willie Scott on the far wing. Back off to Mitchell. Mitchell against Tony Red Bruins. 18-16, Bradley leading it, 51-36. 18-16 was the time we flashed out down to the 18-minute mark. Donald Reese, DR with nine, and Bradley leads it by 17 points now, and Syracuse has seen enough. There's a timeout on the floor with 18 minutes and a second to go. Our score is Bradley 53, Syracuse 36, and we will be right back. Hardy's new Rise and Shine homemade biscuit. I don't want new biscuits. I like the other ones. He never did like anything new. It's all right, Grouch. We'll eat yours. Rise and Shine, that's a good name. They're bigger on the outside, light on the inside. Homemade from scratch every day. Grouch, Hardy's other biscuits were good, but nothing should ever be this good. Never mind this guy. I want to show you about this carburetor. Wow. Hardy's best eaten in town, up and down, all around. 
the sun fades away and the shadows say slow down time to put aside the long day's ride and pass the good times around Push. head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream for a taste as smooth as its name Push. Head for Bush Head for the Mountains Here are two things to remember, Joe, as we return back to the Carrier Dome. Bradley out of the Missouri Valley, Syracuse out of the Big East. Bradley leading by 17, Syracuse with the ball. Up over the timeline is Waldron. Spin move and Willie Scott picks up a foul. Willie Scott picked up a, a shot in the chops on the inbound play, too. That's his third foul, and Dick Rasace is letting him know about that. Here it is again, Waldron taking Willie Scott up. Willie Scott picks up the personal foul. Three on, beep, beep. And at the free throw line will go Gene Waldron. First time there tonight, 6'3", 170 and a sophomore out of Long Island City, New York. Eddie Matthews coming in to replace Willie right now. Just give him a breather. He's got the three fouls. Bradley's got the big lead. Waldron, free throw is no good. Remember tomorrow, primary election day in Illinois. Be sure to vote. Then see the area's most complete election coverage live at 10.30 p.m. right here on News Center 31 on Channel 31. Syracuse is Free now four, is no good. four of 11 from the field, Dan. Bradley with the rebound, and Eddie Matthews brings it into the attacking zone. Donald Reese around his man, back out in front to Matthews. David third kill in traffic, has it stripped. Donald Reese picks up the loose ball, puts it up, won't get it. And the rebound is Syracuse. Alex Hawkins and Donald Reese field. The defensive effort by DR. And he sets it up. Backdoor Mitchell. Got it. Mitchell Anderson with eight. Bradley by 19 at 55-36. Bradley into a man-to-man. -man. I think the Syracuse crowd is shocked. Out on the wing on the far side, Tony Bruin to Leo Rousey, he got it. Routens is averaging 13.4 a game, and that's only his fourth point. Barney Mines nearly slid to the floor and then nearly threw it away. Eddie Matthews was mugged by Routens and nothing was called. Third kill, Routens had his hand in his pants. And third kill brings it over the timeline, literally. Back door Mitchell Anderson and who have a chance for a three-point play. Well, that's the foul that Dick Versace won on the last basket by uh, Mitchell. Got the ball inside. David, good inbound pass that time. Inside pass, rather. Mitchell has a chance for the trifecta. Mitchell Anderson gets the basket. He's got 10 points now. Dick Versace talks it over with Eddie Matthews and sends it back to battle. This could be a 20-point lead. Foul is on Bruins, his third. Mitchell gets the free throw. And Bradley leads it by 20 at 58-38. Biggest lead of the night. Rock. He's been real quiet tonight. Won't get that one down. Donald Reese with the rebound. Eddie Matthews and the Braves on the attack again. I tell you, they show no signs of letting up on this club. Lead by 20 points. We have a long way to go. 16-14. Mitchell Anderson posting low. And the rebound to Sandifer. Sandifer has been kind of quiet tonight, too. He's only got six points. Leos, Routen. Anderson swats at the ball, and it's retrieved back out near center court by Waldron. Tony Bruins, Routen, going to have a charge. On, charge on Bruin, and on Bruin, that'll be his fourth. Right now, you've got to believe that Routen's a little gun shy. He's coming out of the game. Hey, he wasn't going to shoot much anymore if he was stayed in the game. Beheim made a good move. Coach Beheim taking him out because he wasn't going to shoot, wasn't shooting him in. Bradley goes in there. And, and Eddie Matthews gets called for putting the forearm out in front. And as I was going to say, with the offensive, and, and Eddie Matthews picked up the offensive foul. That will bring Willie Scott in, and Eddie Matthews out. That is the second team foul on Bradley in the half. Willie Scott back into the ball game. Eddie Matthews coming out of the ball game. 15-50 for the ball game. Bradley leading it by 20 at 58-38. Sandifer on the far wing, back out in front. Sandifer, number 40. Air ball. Rebound long to Lewis. 
And Bradley comes down on the fly, and Barney Mines is hammered. And the foul's going to be on Waldron. And that's a good example right there, I think, Joe. Syracuse is frustrated right now. Look at it again. That's right. They're overpassing. They're getting the ball inside when there's no place to get inside. They're hacking on defense, reaching, not getting their feet in defensive position, doing everything wrong. Jim Beheim now trying to find a, a good combination to make a run. I said the first five minutes of the second half would be the most important. Bradley went from a 13-point lead to 20 and has a chance to go to as high as 22. John Kieran's back in the ball game now for Syracuse. It's Jim Beheim tries to find the right combination. Barney Mines knocks the first one down. He's got nine points now, and it's 59 to 38. Second free throw to follow. 6-3 junior from Providence New Lenox. Caught all the rim on that one. Bradley 60 to 38 now. 15 and a half minutes to go on this one. On the far right wing, Lewis. Working around the perimeter, Bradley snuck back into that zone last trip down. David Thirdkill is going to pick up a personal foul. Thirdkill picks up the personal foul. You know those fouls are a lot easier to handle. Here it is again. Now watch Thirdkill. He's got his back to you right there. It happened just as he was down in the crouch. Barney Mines coming out. Boise Winters into the ball game. Bradley on the floor with Reese Winters, Thirdkill, Anderson, and Willie Scott. They'll stay in the 2-3 zone so they can uh, just let Syracuse shoot from the outside and also take time off the clock as they pass it around. Waldron. Anderson climbs the board for the rebound. To Willie Scott. The Braves up on the run. On the right side, Reese. Back to Scott. Syracuse staying in that man-to-man -man defense. Mitchell Anderson to Boise winners. Willie Scott in the middle. Reach around foul coming up against Chris Lewis. Dayton leading Illinois now, 49 to 46, and that ball game is about midway in the second half. Illinois losing to Dayton, and boy, they were they were looking at that matchup, possible matchup with Bradley, which may never come off now in more ways than one. Anderson, Mickey with a basket. He's got five, seven in this half now. He's got 13 in the ball game, and Bradley leads it by 14 at 62-38. Actually, it's a little more than that. It's 24. What did I say? 14? <laughs> it's been a long day, Joe. Ronnie Payton gets the basket for Syracuse. He's got six now. 62 to 40. Now, if we stay on even numbers like this, it's easier to add and subtract. Well, he's got backdoor. alley -oop. won't get it. Syracuse with the board. Gene Waldron down on the run. Takes it down the paint. Rebound to Bradley, Boise winners to third, to Mitchell! Mitchell Anderson with 17, and Bradley by 24 again. 64-40, the crowd doesn't even have a chance to cheer, and Syracuse gonna call timeout again. And listen to the Boo Birds come out now, they're not happy at all. Timeout on the floor with 14 minutes to go in the ballgame, our score Bradley 64, and Syracuse 40, we will be right Back, kaboom! The sun fades away And the shadows say slow down Time to put aside the long day's ride And pass the good times around Push! Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream For a taste as smooth as its name Push! Head for Bush Head for the mountains. Flooded basements are hazardous and can only get worse. Basement dewatering systems has a fast, sure way to remove basement water permanently. The dewatering system is installed inside the basement during any season of the year. Concrete floors are not damaged, disturbed, or replaced. Outside walls are not touched. This system is placed at one location, only at the trouble spot where the wall meets the joint. Find out more about this effective, low-cost solution to basement water problems. Call Basement Dewatering Systems at 674-4000. Well, the horn sounds here in the Carrier Dome, and so far, it's been a fun place to play basketball tonight, Joe. That's right. In front of uh, the biggest crowd that Bradley, uh, Bradley University has ever played in in their 77 years of basketball, they are putting on a clinic, leading by 24 with 14 minutes left in this second-round NIT game. 64-40, and the clock spins under 14 minutes now. Dan Swinney and Joe D'Alfonso 
from the Carrier Dome, second round in IT. Syracuse with the basketball, they are in white. Substitution for Bradley, Anthony Webster in it at the uh, point in the 2-3 zone for the first time in this game. We'll run down the lineup for you in just a second for Bradley, who's on the floor. Out in front of deflection, Leo Routens comes up. He drops it off underneath to uh, Bruin. And Bruin's got 12 points now. And it's 64-42, Bradley by 22 with 13 and a half minutes to go in the game. Full court pressure now by the Orangemen. They got to pull out the stops now. Willie Scott, Boise Winters. Anthony Webster battles for the board and picks up the personal foul. He was not in position. That's right, going over the back that time on a weak side. Uh, a shot that usually Boise Winters usually makes. Didn't make it that time. Anthony going into the game, like, like I mentioned before, most freshmen first time in, they're going to be aggressive. Here comes Syracuse. They're going to try to get back to 20 here. Bruins out in front to Kieran's. They work around the perimeter to uh, Routen. Bruins, Willie Scott hangs. In the middle, Payton for the basket. Ron Payton with eight points. Bradley coming back down quickly. Boise Winters gets the basket and gets the foul. I'll tell you, that'll kill a comeback faster than anything, the old three-point play. Well, Boise. a four-point stretch right there by the Orangemen. That, that could have been their run in the first ten minutes. If they would have gotten the ball back and scored, six points would have concerned Dick Versace a little bit. But Boise got the basket. Missed the free throw, the rebound long, and Mitchell Anderson. And now Bradley wanted to know why they weren't getting the... Uh, no, it's five fouls on Bruin. They want That's what the, the five fouls were for. Well, not only did Syracuse get four extra seconds in the first half, <laughs> but they got Tony Bruin with four extra seconds to play. That's 12 points for Tony Bruin. He fouls out of the ball game with 12 minutes and 50, well, probably 12.59 to go in the game. Bradley will get the basketball. Nothing gained, nothing lost. Donald Reese, Boise Winters. Cross court to the top of the key, Boise. Donald Reese, Mitchell Anderson. Inside that man-to-man, -man, Donald Reese. And the rebound to Waldron. Waldron's done a good job on both ends tonight. He takes it the root, won't get it this time. Routen follows, and he's hammered by Boise Winters. Second foul on the freshman from Chicago Gage Park. And at the free throw line will go Leo Routens. Boy, they have shut this guy. They have slammed the door in his face. Here it is again. Boise Winters uh, going up strong for the block. Goes up strong for rebounds uh, for a freshman playing in 33 games. He has really weathered and become uh, just very, very, uh, he's got a lot of stamina. So he's going to go in there tough at the end of the season just like he did the first. Routens missed the free throw. He'll get another try. I don't know what they are from the free throw line officially, but they came in in the second half, four of nine. They missed the first two. We've just missed another one. And so Syracuse having their problems all over the court. So now they're four out of 12 from the free throw line, and they are five out of 13. Routens now with five points, and it's 66-45 off the inbounds. They're going to say Willie Scott got it last, and it'll be out of bounds back to Syracuse. Out of bounds, Syracuse. Orangeman control. They trail by 21 points. Rout too long. The rebound to Peyton for Syracuse on the weak side board. Back out of front, rally into that 2-3 zone. In the corner, nice feed inside Rout. Rout with five and a half, seven in the ball game. And it's 66-47. Bradley down three on one. Boise winners from Mitchell Anderson. Ten points for Boise tonight. And he got six big ones when we needed him in the first half, Joe. And that was just the prettiest fast break you can imagine against full court pressure. Payton. Ron Payton now with 10. Willie Scott saves for Bradley. They're down three on three. Here's Boise again. He had a hand in his face, then he got a foul. And the foul's going to be called on Sean Kierens. That is his first. Kierens, a 6'8 sophomore from Inwell, New York. And Boise will go to the free throw line. Here it is again. Boise goes up for the shot. And Karens went up with him, but it got the hands on the way up. Boise to the free throw line for the first time tonight. 
He is a 48% free throw shooter. But when you think what he was early in the year, Joe, right, he's doubled it, and he just made a free throw there to uh, put Bradley's lead back to the Magic 20 mark. 69-49, 11-43 for this one. And he got them both down. 12 points, six in each half for Boise. 70 to 49, 21 point Bradley Lee. Syracuse looking over that 2-3 zone. Route went to drop it down, deflected and stolen right back by Syracuse. Behind the back, route and a foul. Barney Offensive Hines. foul's gonna be called on Waldron. And that is his board. Look at it again. Well, Barney made an excellent play. He threw the ball away, but he stood his ground one on four, and uh, he just took the passer who did not jump stop and dish it off, went right into him. Well, we could have done a clinic on that one tonight, Joe. Well, it's, it's so obvious. You know, it's the technicalities and it's the fundamentals that uh, coaches want to, you know, get their down to their teams. And when they don't do it, things like that happen. Four on one breaks, and you think of an offensive foul. Barney Mines at the line, a 75% free throw shooter, has certainly helped himself there tonight. Four out of four. And now he's five out of five. 11 points, 71-49. The Braves leading by 22. 11-28 for the basketball game. Barney Mines with the second free throw, and he won't get that one down, and the rebound to Syracuse. Leo Routens with the board, and he gets it off to Waldron. This crowd of 20,000 kind of quiet now. And kill that one. Waldron gets his first basket of the second half, his 10th point. And it is 71-51, an inbound play. It's going to be out of bounds to Syracuse. Dayton leading Illinois by four, 52 to 48, with three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Upset time at the assembly hall. Terrence missed it. Rebound, third kill. Third kill to Barney Mines. Barney Mines to, uh, and again, the clock never started. That's twice that has happened in the game. Willie Scott. Over to Winters to Willie Scott. Donald Reese to David. Third kill for two. Third with his first basket of the second half now. 14 points. And Bradley leads 73-51. Some of the fans getting on Nick Versace, but hey, he's got a point. No clock, folks. Out in front, Willie Scott picks up his fourth personal foul. Tell you what, Dan, a lot of things going on right now. We got the coaches dancing in front of our table here with a legitimate griper looking up for a five-second count, and the clock had not started while the ball was in play. Willie Scott going for a steal, David third kill layup. A lot of things going on, but the basic thing, Bradley up 22. Ooh. Make it 20, 73, 53, as Routon's got mean for a second. Leo Routon's beginning to warm to the occasion here. He's got nine points and a steal in the backcourt. Stolen right back by David third kill. Bradley coming down on the run. Barney Mines has Boise Winters underneath, but takes it himself and misses. Third kill. Underneath in traffic. On the floor, a battle and a jump ball. It'll be out of bounds. Bradley basketball should be. A little sloppy right now, but, uh, you know, it's going to get that way when a team like Syracuse has got a battle back from so far. They're just going to reach and grab, and, you know, Bradley will get caught into that also. 10-24 left. Bradley up by 20. And, uh, you know, we've just seen a lot of fouls here in the first 10 minutes. 73-53, Bradley by 20. Mitchell Anderson going to check back in for the Braves. Now, who was the foul on? They called a foul on somebody underneath as they were lining up. It's a flagrant foul. It was against Boise Winners, and the freshman now will probably shoot a two-shot foul because was it was flagrant. And if it's against Boise, that is his third. And I think Syracuse is going to call time. Let's get this thing back under control. The official said number 11, Routen. And Routen was Routen and Boise were the ones I think that were shaking it up. This is called a two-time intentional foul on number 11. That's what it is. It was on Routen. And a, a, a flagrant two-shot foul against Leo Routen who will shoot free throws and I believe get the ball back after that. So with 10 24 to go in the ball game, Bradley leading by 20, 73, 53. We'll be right back. Who says you can't discount the import? John Beer Sports Subaru says we can, and we're doing it for a limited time only. We are discounting new Subarus a full 5%. That's a big 5% right off the top of 50. 
super popular four-wheel and front-wheel drive wagons, hatchbacks, and sedans. This is an unbelievable offer, discounts of up to $500 on a quality import. Hurry, get your 5% Subaru discount before they're all gone. See the price leader now, John Beer's Ford Subaru. Sometimes a simple river crossing isn't so simple. And when you've got him back, it's your turn. Bush. Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream. For a taste as smooth as its name. Bush. Head for the beer. Head for the mountains. Play about to resume, and when it does, Mitchell Anderson will go to the free throw line for Bradley after being intentionally fouled. And I'll have to admit, I didn't see it. It no, happened it while everybody was battling for the basketball on the floor. No, it happened on the lineup. Well, when they were ball lined up to the was going to inbound off the jump ball. And any time you have a foul without the clock running, it's a flagrant two-shot foul. And uh, that time, Routens, and we talked about the frustration. Routens just elbowed him. They called the flagrant two shots. And I believe Bradley will get the ball after he shoots it. At 16 for Mitchell Anderson, second free throw, and he got them both down. Mitchell is three out of three, five out of five from the line, and Bradley leads it by 22 again at 75-53. We're not midway in the second half yet. Waldron. Gene Waldron. Sophomore from Long Island City. He's got 12. Bradley down the other end. Barney Mines, and he traveled with the ball. The officials tonight all out of the ACC, in case you're wondering about them. John Moreau, Jim Burke, Robert Taylor doing a good job so far. That was a walk. It was. Back out in front, Waldron. Across the zone, Bradley staying in that 2-3. They've been in that most of the second half. In the middle, Sean Karens. Karens with his fourth point, and it's 75-57 now. Mitchell Anderson over his man. Won't get in the rebound to Waldron. Syracuse looking to make it six straight points. Waldron backs in, drops it off, down the lane, Lewis lost it, out of bounds. And it'll be out of bounds off Mitchell Anderson. Jim Beheim looking for a foul, a couple of them that time. Eddie Matthews reached around, David Thurkill reached in, no calls. Leo Routon gets it back off to Waldron, Wild Routon's in the corner, got it down. He's got nine, and Bradley wants a timeout. 79. 75-59, now a 16-point ball game. Barney Mines to Mitchell Anderson. Eddie Matthews sees Dick Versace and gets the timeout. And the Syracuse fans have come back to life. There is a timeout on the floor with 9.15 to go in the ball game. And our score is Bradley, 75, and Syracuse, 59. Peoria Savings is pleased to announce the first tax-exempt savings plan in U.S. history. It's a new federally approved and insured tax-free savings certificate. Maturity is one year and minimum deposit only $500. The exemption is up to $2,000 tax-free for a joint return, $1,000 for an individual. For current rates or to start your tax-free insured certificate, visit any Peoria Savings office, downtown, Knoxville Executive Plaza, and Wardcliffe Center. The American harvest, the labor of farming ends, the challenge of feeding the world begins. Tabor Grain Company accepts that challenge. Through an international communications and transportation network, Tabor Grain carries America's abundance to processors throughout the world. Grain consumers are assured of a dependable supply of quality grain, and the American farmer is assured of a dependable supply of consumers. Tabor Grain Company, accepting the challenge. Dayton leading Illinois 55-52 late in that ball game and the upset try right here. Bradley leading by 16 at 75-59. 9.15 to go in this basketball game. And uh, Joe Play getting a little raggedy here and I don't like to see that happen when you're on the road. That's right. Uh, you got a little ragged, you throw the ball away, the home team shoots a couple in, you get the crowd behind you. This is their first legitimate run of the second half. We thought they'd have two. You know, there's a couple of ways you can look at this. We played over 10 minutes of the second half and uh, Bradley is still you know, up 16, has three more than they were at halftime, so really no worry yet. Donald Reese, man-to-man, half-court pressure now by Syracuse. 
Eddie Matthews double teamed out in front and now it's a single man against Waldron. Matthews spins around him. Donald Reese off the Barney Mines. Watch the back door. Donald Reese back out in front of Mines. 8.45 for the ball game. Bradley has led the entire way. They lead it now 75-59. Matthews against Gene Waldron. Gave it third kill. Eddie Matthews. And there's a foul. And a foul's on Waldron, and that's five on Waldron. I have him for five, and that would be a great break. And they're blowing the horn down there and putting up five fingers. He's out of the game. Here it is again. Right, and he's had a great second half. Uh, Waldron with uh, eight points at halftime, shot in you know, three from dead outside in the second half, was bringing it back a little bit. So Waldron fouls out with 8.32 to go in the ball game. He is the second Orangeman to foul out. And he also fouls out with a dozen points. 24 points on the bench. Back into the ball game, Eric Sandifer. And Sandifer, the team's leading scorer, has been held only six points tonight. He's averaging just a shade over 17. There's the story right there. Eddie Matthews got the first one. Eddie with three points now. He is a 66% free throw shooter. And he will get one more, 76-59, 76-59, it stays. Syracuse with the basketball, they bring it up. Leo Routes, who now has changed from the off guard to the point guard, and he puts up the shot and he missed it. Donald Reese wipes the glass and gets it off to Eddie Matthews. Big point by Eddie Matthews, big rebound by Donald Reese, that stays the momentum just a bit. Underneath, we have a foul away from play. No, we got uh, Barney Mines. Barney, Barney Mines, either an ankle or a cramp, maybe. I saw Barney come down and, uh, and try to change directions to avoid a charge. He just stepped on a foot and turned his ankle a little bit. He's walking on it. He's in some pain, but uh, it doesn't look serious. Jeff Sunderland, the trainer, now will take a look at him. Barney's out of the ball game. Boise is in, and Donald Reese triggers the inbounds right in front of us. Eddie Matthews will bring it up, and there's a steal. Eric Sandifer puts Eddie Matthews' pocket and lays it in. Eric Sandifer now with eight points, and it's 76-61. Matthews in trouble in the backcourt. Gets it ahead to Anderson. Anderson back to Matthews. 7.51 for the ball game. Bradley leading it by 15. Boise winners. Syracuse going all out on defense. Matching up in the man-to-man -man and being very sticky about it. Donald Reese. Boise winners, seven and a half to go in the game. In the middle, David third kill. Third kill dribbles in and out of traffic to Matthews. Donald Reese, third flashes, and he's fouled. And the foul is on Routens, and on Routens is third. Bradley very patient that time and uh, looking for just a layup with a good shot. Here it he is, is down again. getting the third kill going up route and fouling him. Uh, Eddie Matthews coming off the injury, playing in just limited action in the Missouri Valley Conference Tournament in the first NIT game. Looks a little tired out there. I don't think he has the stamina that a point guard needs at this time in the ball game. He's holding his side right now. He shows that he's probably a little tired. I wouldn't be surprised to see Eddie Harris or Willie Scott back in the ball game in a little while. Eddie came over to, or looked at me during one of the timeouts and he said, man, I can't move. And so he's maybe still a little stiff. Third kill, second free throw, and Bradley leads it again by 18 points. Third kill with four in this half, 16 in the ball game. He and Mitchell Anderson have the point honors. Eddie Harris back in, and Eddie Matthews sitting down. So Bradley on the floor with Harris. Third kill, winners, Reese and Anderson, and they're man-to-man -man now. Eric Sandifer to Chris Lewis. Near side, Sandifer. Donald Reese climbs the ladder for the rebound. Ahead to Anderson, a Bradley down two on two. Gonna wait. Donald Reese, Eddie Harris. Against Sandifer. Little more speed in there with Eddie Harris. Outlet pass deflected out of bounds. And it'll be out of bounds to uh, Bradley. Last Vic, touch by Leo Roth. Vic Versace yelling about it to Eddie Harris, not giving up the dribble too fast because they will trap both teams going man-to-man -man right now, and Syracuse putting on a lot of pressure. 78-61, Bradley by 17. Clock spins under seven minutes to go. 
Mitchell Anderson, long pass down to Boise Winters, had an ocean. Third kill. Anderson, and he's clothesline. And Mickey may have reheard his back. Well, here's he here's here the play is right the here as Mitchell was taking to the floor, much as uh, Rick Lamb did in the second round of the Valley Tournament. And this is this is a hard floor right now. You can't be falling on that. There's no support underneath. It is tartan turf, but it is awfully hard. It's over concrete or asphalt, one of the two. And right. You can't be landing hard. on this without uh, hurting yourself. And Mitchell back up quickly, going to the line. Mitchell with 17 points on the night. He's perfect from the line at five out of five. And he made it. Boy, I hated to see him come up holding his back like that. Uh, well, every little bump he's going to be holding his back because it's still very painful to him. Second toss. Mitchell Anderson got a vote. Seven out of seven. And he's got 19 points now. And he's got 13 in his half. Bradley leads it again by 19. Their biggest lead, I think, 22. Drop pretty big. Drop to Chris Lewis. Thread of the needle, got the basket, 80 to 63. Bradley in 17 with the basketball, Anderson. Now running traveling, Willie Scott in the middle, Boise. He's the spoke on the wheel now. Willie Scott, Donald Reese. Down low to the Sheriff, take it up, take it in. Third kill with 18, and it's 82-63. Six minutes to go in this basketball game, and Bradley's back in the man-to-man. -man. Lewis. Into the corner. Shot no good in the rebound. A third kill. Third kill. Gets it off to Willie Scott. Dick Versace says slow it down. Off to Donald Reese. Way back out in front. Willie Scott goes and saves. Bill Rounds double team. Off the third kill. Over the head. Down in the corner to Anderson. The third kill. Jumper will not get the roll. And the rebound is pulled out of there by uh, Peyton. Peyton to Routens. Routens at the point. Drop, tried to drop it to Peyton down low, deflected loose in traffic, and it's pulled out of there by Sandifer. Sandifer, outlet pass of the Sheriff, deflects it out of bounds. It's getting to the point where uh, every shot for Syracuse must go down and every uh, possession is important. Bradley wants a timeout with 5.20 to go in the ball game, and they lead it by 19. Our score, Bradley, Missouri Valley Conference champions leading Syracuse out of the Big East, 82 to 63, and we will be right back. Sundown. It's that time of day, the sun fades away, and the shadows stay slow down. I'm sure glad this day's over. Time to put aside the long day's ride and pass the good times around. Push. Head for the mountains. Head for the beer that goes down smooth as a mountain stream. Bush. Brewed for a taste as smooth as its name. Push. Head for Bush beer. Head for the mountains. Head for Bush beer. Back here at uh, the Carrier Dome, Dayton leading Illinois 59-58 with just a few seconds to go in the ball game at the Assembly Hall. And we're going to have a timeout period here in a minute, Joe. You and I are going to talk about third round possibilities, and I think some people back in Peoria are going to be surprised. That's right, because there may be a possibility that Bradley may be home for the third round. I repeat that, we may be at home for the third round. Old field houses never die, they just keep playing basketball games in them. Third kill, Willie Scott. Five minutes in this one. Deflection and a steal. Peyton to Sandifer. Nice move. Ahead of the break. <laughs> Sean Cairns runs the basketball between the rim and the glass. And a foul called. Foul is on Boise on Winters. Winters Here it is look again. At it. The, uh, Winters got Kieran's on the way up, and that is three on Boise. He pinned the ball to the backboard, and in between the backboard and the rim, that's his third foul. Kieran's will go to the line for two shots. Bradley, uh, you know, in the in the position of the game now, where they, all they have to do is just not let them get uh, a run of points, so that free throws will come down and make a difference. Kieran's is a 72% free throw shooter. He's got five points as he makes the first one. He'll get another one. 
Got a final score on the Illinois game now. 61-58, Dixon upsetting Illinois at the Assembly Hall tonight. 82-75. David Thirdkill ahead of the break for the basket. David Thirdkill makes it 84-65. And Boise Winters steals to Willie Scott on a fast break ahead of Rock. Has it pinned up against the glass. The loose ball out in front, and it's controlled by Syracuse. Willie Scott pokes it away from behind. And David Thirdkill says, let's put some sanity to this thing. That's why MCA basketball. That's why, you know, seniors uh, are so important. Donald Reese didn't get the roll, but got the foul. And the foul is on Routens, and that is the fourth on Leo Routens. Here it is again, Donald Reese. By well, Routens just lowers the shoulder into it. You wouldn't want to stand and take a charge on that like that without crossing your arms in front of him either. I'll tell you what, I think if Routens had stayed on the floor, he would have picked up a charge. But he went up in the air just as Donald hit him. Reese. Missed it, and he'll get another one. Reese with seven, eight, nine points tonight. And this place, Dan, is, is emptying out. It's going to take a long time to empty out, but there are a lot of people heading to the exit. Let's see what the official stats are here on the attendance. Bradley again by 20. And I tell you, I'm surprised. Mitchell uh, getting back there on the, on uh, after the pressure, behind the pressure that time, and uh, just as David Thirdkill did a little while ago. That's a way to, uh, if you're not going to have a great guard bringing up the ball against pressure like that, long passes will do it because they can't cover everyone in the front court when they have their double teaming in the back court. Up is up and in by Syracuse, 86-69. Now we welcome our friends from Champaign. I haven't had any headsets for the last 30 seconds. I didn't leave the place. Underneath the deflection, Willie Scott has it, and Bradley will set it up again. Again, we welcome our friends from Champaign. Boise Winters gets the roll. Bradley leading here, 88-69. As we go down the stretch in this one with three and a half minutes to go, Dan Sweeney, Joe D'Alfonso from the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Leo Routens no and the rebound to follow is good by Andre Hawkins, the freshman from New York. David third kill in the backcourt. Gets it ahead to Mitchell Anderson. Bradley down with 318 to go. Laying out the string. Willie Scott can't get it. A rebound comes out of there to Syracuse. Eric Sanderson. Sanderson now with 12 points. Six in each half. He's averaging almost 17 a ball game. In the trap in the backcourt, it's going to be out of bounds. They're going to say first goal block it, and it will be out of bounds to uh, Syracuse. Out of bounds, Syracuse. Quickly in, Sandifer. Third kill with the rebound. 88-73, Bradley leading it by 15, under three minutes to go in this basketball game. There you see it, 250-249, and the clock rolls. Ahead it goes to Mitchell Anderson. Anderson with the basketball down the Boise winners. Mitchell Anderson post inside. Boise dribbles it out of traffic to Willie Scott. Scott. Works left, works right. The Boise winners backdoor Mitchell Anderson. Back out of front, David Thirdkill. And the Sheriff says wait on it. Willie Scott, 224 in the board. He around and poking the ball, but he's got four fouls. Willie Scott. Back off to him, third kill. Third kill. Routens gets it. Leo Routens picks up the personal foul. And Nick Versace, Tony Maroney, very happy with the white rabbit. And all 40 seconds off the pass. Coming 
came back tonight, played a good game, but uh, he and his teammates got frustrated early in the second half and Bradley came out smoking from the field and put a 13 point lead quickly to 20. I tell you, Joe, most of this uh, 20,000 or so that are on hand here at the Carrier Dome this evening are beginning to file out for the exits and head off into the 36 degree Syracuse, New York night. And David Third kill at the free throw line. The Sheriff got the first one down. David having a big night. 18, 21 points now, and he will get another one. David on the line has only missed one free throw out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tries. Make it 11 tries, and it's now 90 to 73. Bradley leading it on their way to a third round NIT game. Way out on the wing left side, Sonny Spera, a freshman out of Inwell, New York. And it's 90 to 75. Long lead pass, Mitchell Anderson. Anderson had a three-on-one breakaway, decided not to take it. Hawkins goes out to cover him up. Donald Reese, and there's the foul. Bradley has only scored 90 points in a game twice previous this year. Once was on the road at St. Francis, a 94-63 win, and the other was at home against West Texas, 92-69. So since January, since January 16th, Bradley has not went over to over the 90-point uh, mark. Joe D'Alfonso along with Dan Sweeney here as you saw the replay of the foul and Donald Reese gets the free throw. Free throw now with 11, uh, Reese now with 11 points, 6'9", senior from Chicago South Shore. Uh, Reese misses the second one. And the rebound to Syracuse, Eric Sandifer, boy he can't buy a basket tonight. Willie Scott, the 5'11 point guard is fouled. Foul by Peyton on the run. Since he's trying to get a hold of Willie Scott, that's tough to do. Dan, maybe uh, we got a second here. We're going to have some free throws. We should talk about what might come up. Let's talk about that right now, as a matter of fact, Joe. Third round NIT game may be back at Robertson Memorial Fieldhouse. What do you know about it? I talked to Ron Ferguson, Bradley Athletic Director, uh, late this afternoon. He said that uh, Illinois was guaranteed another home game in the third round if they had gotten by Dayton. Of course, that did not happen. And so Illinois, with uh, their 16,000 seats, uh, will not host another game. They will not play another game. Bradley was in position to host either Nevada, Las Vegas, possibly, or Oklahoma. If those two survived uh, games tonight, uh, they would very possibly come west and come to Robertson Fieldhouse. That was a decision made by the NIT committee. That was a definite possibility. Uh, the NIT looks for a couple of things in bringing teams to New York. One, how many fans can they bring? Obviously, sometimes they don't think that uh, teams like Washington and UNLV and San Diego State, who are still in it, won't bring a lot of teams to New, uh, a lot of fans rather to New York. Uh, the other possibility is they probably wouldn't want two teams from the same media area into New York. Bradley and Illinois would have fit that criteria, but now Illinois is out, so maybe Bradley will get another home game, given the advantage to get into New York. So. And that was all before Illinois got upset tonight. Mitchell Anderson just called for a uh, goaltending call, makes it a 92-77 game. And Syracuse, well, it's a good thing there's not another four minutes left in this ball game. They're back within 15 points. Well, Bradley's was, led by as many as 22 at times this evening. It was 13 at the half, so they never ate into that. And it's 15 now, so this game has been over for a long time. David Thurkill. Boise Winters. Eddie Broadway Harris into the corner. That's Kerry Cook now at the spoke. Bradley running the four corners with a minute nine to go. Near steal, Eddie Harris. David third kill. Boise Winters, a minute three, a minute two, and a minute one, and now we're under a minute. Bradley's into the third round of the NIT tournament, and a foul gonna be called. That's on Ron Payton, that is his third. Let's talk a little bit about this. We have 57 seconds left. This is Bradley's 14th NIT appearance. They took a 17 and 11 record into this game. It will go to 18 11 all time. There have been some impressive victories. A lot of them coming in the gardens in New York. But I tell you, for for the first time, Bradley's played on the road in an NIT in someone's uh, home arena. This has got to be an impressive victory. One to rank with so many other impressive victories they've had in this tournament, a very prestigious tournament. And uh, people are going to look back at this and saying it was a clinic, it was uh, a masterpiece, and you got to give Dick Versace and his coaching staff and the players a lot of credit for making it happen. 93-77, and it was never in doubt after the first four minutes of the second half. 
Mitchell Anderson just did something I don't think the people back home saw, but he went after he just came out of the ball game. David Thurkill misses the second free throw, went down to the other bench to congratulate the other players. You don't see that happen very often. Jumper, Calvin Perry for Syracuse. Perry went for the steal there. Third kill to Eddie Harris with 42 seconds to go. Anthony Webster lost it. And it'll be out of bounds to Syracuse. Eddie Matthews back in. The Sheriff, David Third kill is out. Tremendous game by David. 21 points. Uh, defense on uh, Routens did, uh, did everything. Passed the ball. Uh, play rebounded. You can't ask enough for a senior. Peter Wayne, down low, deflected and stolen away by Boise Wooders. Boise in traffic to Eddie Harris. 24 seconds to go. Bradley's going to win their 23rd game of the year. Anthony Webster won't get it. The rebound ahead to Syracuse. They're down in the run. They dribble it out of bounds. Pass was intended for Sonny Spira. 15 seconds all that remains in this basketball game. And Bradley leads it 93 to 79. And there's a foul. Tony Brown's going to be on Spera, his first. Peroni looking at uh, Anthony Webster and saying, you know, why did you take that shot? The coaches aren't going to let this game get out of control, even though we got a big lead. We came in here with discipline. We will go out with discipline. And uh, Nick Versace is, is up as we talk right now and giving instructions to his players. A mind of the Channel 31 will carry the Easter Seal Telethon with Rolly Keith live from the Northwoods Mall, March the 27th and 28th. We know you want to join us. Coming out of the ball game is Ron Payton. And he gets a nice hand. Played a good ball game tonight. And into the ball game is Greg Watson for Syracuse. Eddie Harris at the free throw line guns down the first one. Eddie with three points on the night, 94-79. Bradley by 15. And the second toss by Eddie Harris is also good. 95-79. The clock did a run out. 10, 9, 8. You watch it and we'll watch it. Spera, Sonny Spera with his third basket since coming on. This one is all over. And the Bradley Braves have defeated the Syracuse Orangemen in the second round of the NIT. 95-81 will recap tonight's game in just a few moments. Sherman. Hi, Jack. This is Colleen Callahan. Hi, Colleen. How are you doing with your new microwave? It's great, and I really appreciate the excellent price you gave me, too. You won't believe what I'm doing right now. What? I'm talking to you over new Xena Space Phone TV. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. Simply by pushing a button on a remote control, you can answer your phone. Well, I'll have to stop by and see it. I'm sure you'd give me the best price. Get your new Xena Space Phone TV at Sherman's Place in Peoria. Browns has the only word in active footwear. That word is Nike. Nikes will take you from hoops to hurdles, free throws to finish lines, marathons to meets. Athletes all over America have designed and tested Nike shoes, so you know you're getting the top in performance and fit. So if you want Nike shoes... Back here at uh, Syracuse, New York, the Carrier Dome, rapidly beginning to empty out as Bradley hosts an impressive 95-81 win over the Syracuse Orangemen. And Joe, it was a game when the, uh, as you said, the, the first five minutes of the second half were going to be very important, and that's how it turned out. It exactly was right. Well, Willie Scott gave us a big lift at his first two shots in the second half. Barney Mines came down and hit one. We got six straight points there and uh, made a 13-point lead quickly into a 20. Uh, after that, they started to, Syracuse started taking bad shots, hurrying, reaching on defense, trying to get it all back at one time, which you can't do. And uh, this, it went on, it was so impressive from there, it was, it was unbelievable. Bradley played with a lot of confidence. 4-0 in the East now this year with uh, wins at Penn State, St. Joseph's. Uh, Dick Brisse standing right in front of us, St. Joe's and St. Francis. And uh, now 4-0, if we have another chance to play in the East, it will be in the Garden. Scoring, both teams had five men in double figures. Bradley led by David Thirdkill with 23, 20 points for Mitchell Anderson. And we have been joined by Bradley coach Dick Versace. Stand up there, coach, you've been sitting all night. <laughs> hey, congrats. Put it on there. We'll make you a television star. Yeah, Congratulations, right. coach. That, the Danny. people back in Peoria. You, Congratulations. Dan. Your Thank kids you. played a great ball game. 
Well, we uh, are a team that has a little uh, extra element in its blood right now. We're a team that has something special coursing through our veins. And that is a little old-fashioned anger. And uh, well-controlled and properly channeled, that's a, a, a nice ingredient to have at this time of year when you just played your 33rd game. And not only that, Coach, but you had something that you had talked about many times in the early part of the season when people were questioning, why are you playing the freshmen? Why are you bringing them in here? We're losing basketball games. We're not rolling over people like we're supposed to. The freshmen, everybody played tonight. Everybody contributed. Everybody played well. I guess that's why I'm a basketball coach and everybody else does what they do. Well, Coach, uh, third I'd round like to the think, Danny, that after 20 years, some applied intelligence to a single craft gives you some expertise <laughs> in that craft, okay? Third round in IT coming up very, very shortly, and then we still don't know where we're going. The sun fades away And the shadows say slow down Time to put aside the long day's ride And pass the good times around Push! Head for the beer brewed natural as a mountain stream For a taste as smooth as its name Push! Head for Bush beer Head for the mountains Why? They're mining my coal. Pardon me, Mother Nature. Amex Coal's the name, ma'am. At Amex, once the coal is mined, we restore the land. Our surface mines might be used for agriculture, forests, places where wildlife can live. Just remember, I'll be watching from now on. We'll be careful, Mother Nature. That's a promise. Caring about the way we use the land. Come see and test drive America's best-selling import, Toyota, at Peoria Toyota Volvo. Choose an 82 Toyota Corolla that proves an economy car doesn't have to look like one. Test drive the all-new Celica Supra, quality through and through. Or the popular Cressida with European touring car luxury. And remember that whatever Toyota you choose, you're choosing economy because Toyota really delivers good gas mileage. Buy now at Peoria Toyota Volvo, top of the hill on Knoxville in Peoria. Bradley Braves basketball on Channel 31 has been brought to you in part by Bush Beer. Remember, don't just reach for a beer, head for the mountains. Join us again this weekend for more college postseason action here on 31. This has been a Midwest Television production.